Hey there, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up and use your own GraphQL Hive instance. I'm going to start with actually setting up the Docker containers. Then we will create our first uh, project and target on the Hive app. Install and configure the GraphQL Hive CLI. Then publish our first GraphQL schema. Uh, fetch the published schema via the artifacts API. Then check or trial a new pending schema against the existing schema and last publish the new schema. So in order to actually run GraphQL Hive, first need to head over to docs.graphqlhive.com slash self hosted slash get started. There we will find a comment for downloading the latest uh, Docker Compose file. Uh, for this demo, I assume that you have Docker Compose pre-installed on your system. Once we execute a comment, we now have our Docker Compose community.yaml file. That includes all the services required for running Hive locally. But before we can spin that up, we first need to set some environment variables, as you can see. For that, head back over to the documentation, scroll a bit down, and then you will see all those environment variables. Just copy that, head back to the terminal and paste that, run it. And then if we print the environment, we will actually see all those environment variables with the actual value being set. So what we're going to do here, just to ensure that every time we run our stack, we use the same credentials and secrets. We'll just create our .env file, copy paste that in. And then in addition, for the Docker tag, we want to use the not the latest tag because uh, we want to pin it down to an exact uh, commit hash. So for that, we can head over to the GraphQL Hive repository on GitHub, check the latest commit, click on that, copy paste it and put it in here. Then just to make sure, we just source the .edit file again. And then we can pull our images. Great. So after we pulled our Docker container images, we can actually uh, run the stack. So what we're gonna do is call docker compose file docker compose dot commute to the YAML up. This uh, will take a while. Meanwhile, we can see that now we have a .hive folder. Within that hive, we have all the uh, storages for the Docker containers. Uh, the most important ones are Postgres and Minio. Postgres is for <laughs> storing all the data related to the GraphQL Hive application. And Minio is later for actually storing the uh, GraphQL Hive artifacts that you can access via the API. So. We see the database migrations running, all the containers are spinning up. And then soon we can see that we should now be able to visit localhost 8080 for the GraphQL Hive application. So here we can now sign up for first account. Sign in and this is the personal organization that's automatically created for every account. We can create additional organizations, but for now we're gonna stay in the uh, personal organization. So now we already finished step one. So let's continue with step two, creating our first project and target. That's actually pretty straightforward. All we gotta do is click on create project. Then we just name this my first project. And for now we choose a uh, project type single, but if you're using federated or stitching scope, uh, schema, you can choose either of those. Okay, create project. And now we are on the project page. If we go back to our organization, you can see that the project is now listed there. So on the project, we automatically created uh, three targets. First, the development target, uh, the staging target and the production target. For the purposes of this video, we're going to use the development target. So if we now click on that, that 
it actually says Hive is waiting for your first schema. You can publish a schema with the Hive CLI, Hive client. So now that we created the project and target, let's uh, install the GraphQL Hive CLI. Then we're going to create a new terminal window and then use your favorite package manager for installing what you want. I'm going to use PMPM in this video. And it's recommended that you install the CLI as a development dependency. Let's do that. Okay, cool. So now you can see in our dev dependencies we have the CLI and now if we run PMPM, uh, GraphQL I dev dash version, we don't see anything because it's high. Yay. So we now have the CLI locally. Okay. But since we're using self-hosted version, we first need to actually configure uh, the Hive CLI. So what we will create is a hive.json file. And in there, we first have to specify the registry. And by default, it will point to the cloud version. But here we'll just point it to uh, the local API, API, which is running on localhost AD82 slash GraphQL. And then in addition for actually uh, publishing a GraphQL schema, we also need to create a token. And the token we have to create on the web UI. So or back on our project or the target, we go to the settings tab. And in the settings tab, there's the token thing. And here we can just generate a new token. Let's call it my first token. And then we also need to set some permissions. By default, no, no permissions are enabled. We will go to all targets. And then on the registry, we allow read and write. So registry basically says manage schemas registry, publish new schemas, which is what we want to do. Run schema checks and report usage, etc. So we generate the token, copy that, head back to our uh, hive.json file. And there we add a new entry called token. And here we're gonna enter this one. Okay, cool. So now we can actually use the Hive CLI for publishing our first schema. And within this demo repository, we already have schema.grapql file. It has a very simple schema, just query root type with a hello field turns a string. Uh, we're gonna publish that one with this comment. And it said we published the initial schema. It's available at HTTP 8080, my organization, my first project development. So if we now head over to the browser, to the target, and we click on schema, we can now see that the latest schema got published here. Okay, cool. So now we published our first schema version to the local GraphQL Hive instance. So now let's also fetch the schema via the artifacts API. Uh, back on the schema target, we can see the update CDN button. Let's click that just to make sure it's up to date. And then we can click on the connect button up there. And what it will do is generating a CDN access. Uh, if you're running on localhost or on the self-hosted Hive, it's not actually a high availability multi-zone CDN, but uh, an endpoint on the local API service. So we'll get an access token and an URL, and we'll just copy that real quick, put it in here. And then we can use Perl. Oh. Let's uh, provide the header we just copied and the URL. So we added the dash L so it will follow uh, redirects. And if we now execute this, we can see it's our first operation. So if we omit the dash L, you can see that 
we'll just get it found. And if we also print the headers, we can see that what happens is the initial request gives us back a 302 status code found. And then the locations uh, points you to the actual bucket where the schema file is located. So if we add the dash L, it will actually automatically redirect us if we're using curl. And then we have our initial schema. So what will usually happen if you're using GraphQL Hive or what you're using GraphQL Hive for is that your schema will change. So for example, if we now add a new field, we wanna, we can publish this new schema. But before we actually want to publish a new schema, we should always make sure that the schema is still valid and it might not break any existing customers or uh, API users. So uh, we can use the Hive schema check comment for this. And what this will do is it will check the local schema against the latest uh, published schema on the GraphQL Hive API and report whether there's any breaking change uh, present in that schema. So let's run this and we'll list us the ch changes here. We de detected one change because we added a new field, which is called foo to the query root type. So uh, let's also remove the hello field here and then run this check again. And now it will say, say oh, detect one error. There's a breaking change. The field hello was removed from the object type query. So before you ever publish a schema, you should always check the schema. And in fact, if you now try to uh, publish this broken schema, the Hive registry will actually reject the schema because it contains a breaking change. If you actually want to publish a breaking change, then you can use the false parameter, but we won't use that right now. Okay. Let's change it back to adding our new field. We check that again. This is usually what you would run uh, on your uh, CI pipeline or CD pipeline before the schema change is actually published. And then once we see everything is fine, we can just publish the schema. And now we publish the new schema version. If we go to the Hive UI, we can now see our new field. And also if we now again call our CDN or API route handler for getting the composite schema, can see that the new field is now also here. So yeah, that's it. Thank you.